on board, here board. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Wait, where, where, where am I? Oh, you're finally awake. Huh? Wait, who are you? Oh, I was in Gomadoya. Oh, um, great. Uh, uh, <sighs> so, where am I? Um, Japan? What's that? You don't recognize it? You ever been here? No, I've never been to a planet called Japan. Yeah. Planet? Yeah, that's what you meant. No, I mean country. What? Wait, what, what makes you think Japan is the name of the planet? Uh. I'm confused. Uh, Miss Ingo, was it? So, wait, what's the name of this planet called, then? Earth. What? Yes. Huh. That's strange. What, what's so strange about it? I thought Earth was gone. As then she, she sees Izuku, a 10 year old Izuku, pretty much standing behind the door. Like, Who's that? My son? Why is he hiding? Because he doesn't want to bother you. Oh, that's fine. He's like, no, no, I mean, he. <sighs> it's his. Well. Our quirk. What? You see, our quirk is different. And it seems to only really react when we're in moments of stress or anger, <laughs> emotional state, you know. Uh, okay, okay, hold on. First of all, what's a quirk? You're serious? Yes. I've never heard of a quirk before. Um. Alright, I guess I'll try to explain as much as I can. Brief explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay. So it's kind of like a species designator or whatnot. Genetic code. I guess you could say that. I mean, isn't. Your appearance based on your quirk? Uh, no, I'm. Huh. <sighs> oh well, might as well. I'm not from this planet. What? Yeah, I'm from another planet. That's that's not possible. Of course it's possible, I mean... Huh. So you never seen an extraterrestrial before? N no. If anything... Are there any others? We might need to be worried about? Huh? Oh! Oh, no! No, no, no! N not at all. It's, it's, uh... It's not like we're... I mean, so this can be, especially if you're dealing with huts. But, no. Uh, if anything, we're relatively peaceful. 
Oh. Okay. So, uh, tell me more about this quirk of yours. You say it, it uh, occurs during stress or something? Uh, oh, right. <sighs> Let's see. During moments of intense emotions or stress, things start to happen around me and my son. Really? Yeah, it, it can be quite the hindrance, especially around people. Okay, like things like uh, what exactly? Let's see. Well, for one, things start to move or change the way they were before. What? Think of it like a ghost or poltergeist. Uh, kind of a haunting, you could say. Um, okay, let's see if I can do something more simple. At the very least, when it comes to uh, our quirk, things start moving around, falling, people get hurt. So you're saying objects move whenever you're actually... Yes. Oh. Alright. Hmm. You say this is a moment of intense stress or the like. Correct? Yes. Huh. Okay. Sounds... Similar to what I can do. What? What do you mean? Like, uh, the force. What's that? Hmm. Well. You told me about quirks, I might as well tell you about... Well. The force. Her giving her best explanation for what she knows... It's pretty much... Huh. That's interesting. I I know. So are you sure it's not a quirk? Well, positive, but I mean, it, it does have something to do with the... Uh, something in our cells, you know, whatnot, whatever. I think how strong we are. Mm. But either way... So, you and your... Wait, what's that he's holding? As, yes, Izuku is holding a holocron. Much to Ahsoka's dismay, he's like, please don't break it. As then it opens. Izuku's like, I'm sorry, dropping it, but also... Huh. Uh, but wait, how did you... You did... You opened it. What, was he not supposed to? Well, uh... Well, I... I mean, you wouldn't expect someone to, but... Wait. That actually might explain it. What? I mean, my son's sorry. I mean, he'll try to put it back together, right? Won't you? So, yes. I'm sorry. No! If anything, since you did that, that's technically a good thing. That means you're force sensitive. What's that? It means you can pretty much do what I can do. And that might mean your quirks may not be quirks at all. You just might have the force. And since you had no teachers, you, uh, you don't know how to utilize it at all. Hmm. I, I suppose that would make some sense. But no one around here knows much about the Force. 
I guess I will explain why we've been dubbed somewhat bad luck. What? Yeah, not being able to control these uh, this telekinetic thing that goes on with our well, what we thought were quirks. People <laughs> consider us bad luck when it comes to certain stressful situations. My son doesn't even play with his friends anymore because of it. What? Y yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. But how about this? I'll be more than happy to train you. R really? You think I'll... I mean, it'll take a lot of hard work. I mean, usually... The Jedi would... What? Would what? <sighs> Are you sure you want to know? Please. Well... The Jedi would naturally... Find you and kidnap you. So to speak. What? Her clutching Izuku... Holding him tight. Like, are you here to? No, no, of course not. In fact, I've been kicked from there. W why? I was set up. They tried to offer me position back, but I couldn't. Why wouldn't you want to go back? They were so quick to exile me, to turn their backs on me, without even a smidgen of real concrete evidence that could tie me to what I was accused of. Why would I want to go back? <sighs> should be fortunate I didn't go to the Sith. Who's that? They're the opposite of Jedi. As then she gives a explanation of the Jedi and the Sith, pretty much giving some explanation to what makes them different, what makes them similar, the type of abilities they can do, some being more malicious, others benevolent, at least the one she knows of. Izuku's eyes widen at this, seeing that as so if I get strong enough, I could do that? Sure. As hope fills his heart. Ain't it a wonderful thing? Inko, she is a little like... Uh, it seems way too much of a coincidence that you show up. And, you know... Just so happens that we're force sensitive, as you called it, and not the fact that it's not a quirk, but well, the force guides all of us. At least that's what the Jai used to say. No offense, but the Jai do sound like jerks. Suku, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> wait, wait. Did I say something? Are you alright? No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just... Uh, you're not wrong. They've made some questionable decisions. Definitely. <sighs> Uh, but thank you, I need that. No problem. So, anyway, yes, I'd like to train your son, and possibly you. What? But I, I don't want, I don't need to become a hero. Oh, not, not that. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but... Uh, if anything, it'd be good to be able to control it whenever it's necessary. 
you know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> mm. Let's see. Uh, wait. Where are, am I again? Japan? No, no. Where am I? Right. W where is this place? Oh, uh, you're in our apartment building. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, so, first things first. You have to get more tuned to the force. At least be able to feel it when it comes to sensing presences or doing this, doing that. Especially when it comes to using telekinetic powers. Oh, um, okay. So, we're starting now. Depends how fast you want to get good at using your newly brought to light powers. Yes, let's, let's start right now. As Izuku and Go, they are under the tutelage of one Ahsoka Tano. In which Ahsoka is kind of a, it's like, I can't believe I'm technically training two people. I'm technically a, a master now. But also, being still salty as hell, I probably would. I would most definitely be salty too. When it comes to how her last uh, encounter with the Jedi Order ended. So, yeah. Because of her teaching, she's not the best teacher, but luckily, Zuku, he's not completely. Uh, Dumbass, he's he can get the gist of it and then explain to Inko what she doesn't understand. And yes, Izuku is training like this, trying to get more control over it, trying to keep his emotions lower, calming down when it's necessary. And though it's not something Jedi really do, as all. <laughs> Ahsoka has told him, like, don't ball up your emotions. As Izuku does ask, isn't, that's not the Jedi way. It's like, it, it, I mean, aren't you supposed to? Like, yes, but as we have uh, clearly shown, the Jedi are not the smartest people in the world. Izuku not really questioning his master. Inko is pretty much enjoying the Kwai John with her son as well as they getting to know how to actually use their abilities. It's when it comes to Izuku in school that people start to actually notice a change. For one, he is getting slightly more built. He's still 10 year old so not much muscle mass but they can obviously see a change in his demeanor, his to the way he carries himself, which everyone's like, isn't he bad? Is he? And this is when Bargo shows up because, if anything, he doesn't really like Izuku at all. Reason why is because when they were younger, Izuku got too upset at Kaski, he force pushed him into a tree. And broke his arm by accident. Mishi was pissed, definitely. The only thing is, is uh, once you get the whole story, like, oh, you were bullying someone, were you? That she's kind of more lenient towards Izuku. And yeah, Bogo has definitely been the uh, driving point when it comes to the other kids not wanting to be around Izuku. Yeah, he's. Uh, so, when he sees Izuku actually seeming more happy, one thing he's going through his mind is like, what happened to put that smile on his face? It doesn't feel, that's not right. He's supposed to be miserable. He's supposed to be a jinx, a bad luck carrier, all this and all that. So, he does start to slowly but surely follow Izuku home. In which... 
seeing that he's actually training on the outside of that apartment in various areas, like in the woods, at the beach, he realizes what's really going on. Why? Heck, he's learning how to use power. He's going to be able to become a hero. And Bakugo, due to all that bragging he's done over these years, all those times he said he was the best, the only time he really lost was when he went up against Izuku and got his arm broken. So, yeah. He already knows that Izuku has potential to be a powerful person, a hero. Especially if he learns how to control that power of his. So, Bongo being how he is, he's uh, he tries to spread more rumors about Izuku being more less of a person to hang around with. As the rumors spread, Izuku can slowly hear slightly who got gave them the rumors. If anything, he has to really care. If anything, he's going to achieve his dream and be a great hero. But it's when everyone's outside class, class is dismissed, Bago shows up again and starts fighting with Izuku, insulting him and everything. And Izuku's getting no way pissed. To the point where rocks and pebbles are starting to float around him. Kind of like a standard anime fight. But still, you can just imagine. Bongo is scared here. But he knows that Izuku has been training just enough. So, like, okay, maybe if I get him riled up enough just to at least hurt me or somebody. That will deter him more from wanting to be a hero. In which, Izuku calms down. He starts counting to ten and walks off. Bago, being an arrogant ass to an extent, is pretty much saying, Where are you going, coward? Still egging him on. All, even the other students are pretty much like, Dude, what are you doing? Why are you why won't you leave him alone? Bago seeing that he's starting to lose the people's support, goes in to attack Izugu, in which he leaps in the air and throws an explosion. The only thing is, the explosion doesn't touch Izuku. In fact, Bakugo is floating in mid-air. As he sees Izuku with a pissed off expression. It's like, oh shit. And Izuku just slowly drops him. Please leave me alone. I didn't do anything wrong. Bongo falls to his knees in utter shock. Cause he could have easily gotten killed. He's seriously injured. But Izuku wanted to be the bigger person. And like, I just want to be left alone and do my training. That gesture, that event, moment. Bongo realized, yeah, I'm going to train a lot more. And seeing how everyone saw how he was not only the aggressor but how he was given mercy honestly god mercy everyone doesn't really uh, think of him as highly as he would in canon then again he was pretty much an asshole in canon too though yes he has a strong quirk people see him as more of uh, well a boy so even his goons don't really want to talk to him if he's just going to be starting fights for no good reason. But one thing's for sure, Izuku is pretty much enjoying his life. People are starting to talk to him more, but he still stays distance. Must as there's like, wait, what's going on? Him just letting him know is like, ah, I'm still not good at controlling this and I don't want to risk hurting you. That answer just, oh my god, we were wrong about you this whole time. 
It's fine. I I can control my quirk. You know, knowing is the force, but it's like, ugh. You won't have to explain that. So yes, Izuku actually does gain more popularity as well as a few friends who slowly drift apart from him because since he does want to be a hero and he does want to get hold of this power of his, he doesn't really socialize as much and then again he never really did. In fact when it comes to notebooks, though he does have them on quirks as well as to use them in battle, mainly for heroes and also villains who have been interviewed and whatnot and their quirks registered he's also trying to learn more about the force itself though Ahsoka pretty much says it is within every living breathing thing it binds us all that nonsense he still wants to research it more at least find out more applications in which eh, if anything, all he has, when it comes to him using telekinesis, that's all he really has to use. Jedi mind trick, that would be helpful interrogations, I guess, but still, it's not necessary. When Izuku's actually 14, he decides to actually get a part-time job. Since he is a, still a minor, he can, there's not many jobs that are available to him except those who are looking for specific quirks one of which movers or people who handle a lot of stock and equipment Izuku thinks this, this is perfect training I mean when it comes to helping people move in and out of places rearranging this putting this there Heck, perfect training especially if he handles things more delicate Ahsoka she has found her crashed ship in which she has tried her best to repair it to the best of her ability and then she used this thought hmm I think he could use a lightsaber too I'm sorry what Inko just walking in the room was like, oh, n nothing. I was just uh, thinking out loud. I was saying it might be time for you two to get your lightsabers, but I don't know where any Kyra crystals are. Lightsaber? What's that? And this is when Ahsoka just like, <laughs> this is what a lightsaber is. Activating it is. Uh, you want to give that to me and my son? Well, I mean, you had to craft it yourself, but uh, it's pretty much impossible without Kyber Crystal. Huh. Do you know where one might be? Ah, uh, no. Hmm. Oh well, I guess we'll just have to make do with using our telekinetic abilities, I suppose. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, no, no need to apologize. It's not your fault at all. Yeah, but I'm your master. I'm supposed to. That may be true. But. Yeah. <sighs> You've done enough for us right now. Teaching us how to use our powers, making it so we're not walking disaster areas. <sighs> yes, I, I believe you've been helping us a lot more than you realize. I mean, I don't remember last time I seen my son so happy. As when it comes to Izuku's room, he does have some All Might stuff. It's just more. Eh, he's not an overly crazy as hell fanboy. If anything, he's more like, oh yes, I'm a fan of this hero and I'm a fan of this one too. I got some merchandise. 
just not overly obsessed like he was, at least would be in canon. In fact, once Iko and Izuku do learn of lightsabers, Izuku does pick up a kendo class. As well as learning more martial arts, because Ahsoka does let it be known that, yeah, the Force is helpful and all, but you shouldn't be overly reliant on it. So, Inko takes self defense classes, and Izuku takes martial arts classes. And uh, Izuku is a hell of a quick learner and decides to actually come up with a fighting style that mixes both the force as well as oh, whatever martial art he decides to train at this moment of time. Ahsoka is actually impressed at this and actually as Izuku could he teach her this weird fighting style. Him being like well I, it's not really perfected yet I mean if anything, it's more or less a work in progress. That's perfectly fine. If anything, I guess this time you're the master. And yeah. Now we cut to the beginning of the anime, which is 14, going on 15. And yeah. No one laughs at him. Everyone believes in him that he could be a hero. Bago is silent as hell. Because, hell, if he had any power in middle school, he sure as hell doesn't have it here in this timeline. So, yes. Such an instant. Isuku knows this is such an instantly. As you would expect, he holds the such villain and waits for a hero to arrive. And wait, when it is all my. He's not unconscious, he asks for an autograph, and they go their several ways while he's, Yuku hands over the sludge villain. Easy peasy. Much to the point where, hey, cool. Yeah, I got an autograph from All Might. So yes, no second sludge villain incident, and Izuku doesn't have to ask, could he be a hero without a cork? <laughs> I mean, it's this. Now, as for the training, Isuku, he's training at work, which helps gather up some money, but also, when it comes to the versatility of using the Force, at least the telekinesis side of, side of it, he does go to the beach every now and again and come pack the trash and just throw it away at the nearest dump. Which... People do get to go to Day of the Beach without gagging. He's going to find something that could possibly be, you know, repaired. He actually asked Ahsoka, could she possibly do something? In which, yeah. Turns out Ahsoka is a very good mechanic, if nothing else. She's already fixed her ship, so it's pretty much anyone's guess of what else she could make. Though she does have to adjust to the new rules and everything, like, since they are trying to register the Force as a quirk. Yeah, no quirk usage, sorry. Much to the point where when she does get a job, she is obviously a fish out of water. To, like, for one, she has to deal with assholes who can't keep their eyes off. And sometimes when they can't keep their hands off, they end up with something broken. It's so good by this time. Let's see. Let's say she was around 17. Yes. Let's say she was 17 when she crashed at four years. Yeah. She's 21. Izuku, he admires Ahsoka to the point where he wishes she was a hero so she can get merchandise for him. 
to pretty much buy and put on his room. Only thing is, he realizes, though it may seem flattering, it's kind of creepy. I mean, Ahsoka does care much for Izuku and Inko. She's just like, okay, that's sweet and all, but you already had me. But seeing your room plaster with my image would be very off putting for some reason. Izuku understanding. And you can just imagine how he feels when it comes to. The entrance exam. He's excited. He's he know he's studied for this. He knows that heck, if anything goes wrong, he can use his quirk whenever he wants. Of course, he still calls it a quirk, at least around normal people. But still, one thing he did not expect to see is Bakugo. If anything, seeing how Bakugo's ego and pretty much image was almost completely demolished that fateful day he's actually surprised to see him there at all he does try to make some small talk but Bakugo just ignores him and gives him a death glare which Izuku though he is a bit a little like thrown aback he's pretty much huh yeah he really does not like me however this is not to deter our young Izuku. If anything, this just gives him more motivation to be the best. To get the number one spot. Be a pro hero. As for the practical exam, it is actually pretty easy considering that one, he can save people and get hero points, which he still doesn't know about. Two, when it comes to pushing a deactivation button, Izuku just has to locate it and use the force to deactivate the robots. If not, he can just use it to rip out their power sources, rip out their limbs, yada yada yada, even crush them. Now, when it comes to the zero pointer, Izuku does start running off like everyone else, saying, uh, yeah, this is pretty much a waste of time, it's not worth any points. But when someone gets trapped, he's pretty much... <sighs> okay, let's do this. Him holding back the zero pointer with a force. Only thing is, this thing is relentless. Much to the point where he has to dip down into his emotions as he pushes as much as he can and topples the whole zero pointer. Impressing everyone, especially the people up in the observation room. All my just looking is like, hey, I remember that kid. Really? <sighs> yeah. He was really good help when it comes to that quirk of his. I mean, I could see him becoming a great hero in the future. Really? You're giving him a glowing recommendation? Yes, of course. I'm impressed. What? Yes. If anything, I'm surprised that you can actually function without doing hero work for so long. Oh, oh come on. I said, well, I, it's not, I'm not that bad. Do I need to punch you in your side? I would prefer if you didn't. That's what I thought. But yeah, if anything, this kid, I can see potential in him. If anything, for some reason, something feels hmm, different about him. I can't put my finger on it. Really? Yeah. I can't really understand it, but something's different. Huh. Well, once you realize what's so different about him, please feel free to let everyone else know about it, right? 
Whatever. I'm going to bed. But the, the test just finished. Like, I know. I need to catch up on so much more sleep. When he does get his acceptance letter, he does see that, yes, he is in the top spot. The only thing is, uh, it's pretty much the hero points that solidified that. Got the number one spot? Definitely. Hero points? Definitely helped. But if anything, what you see is that Bongo is right behind him. He's also... <laughs> uh, well, I knew you had a great quirk. Bongo saying this, he's pissed! Though, yes, he got into UA. Though, yes, he's in the t top 10, at least top 5. It's the fact that he lost to Izuku that really pisses him off. And, eh, you can't, you can understand his reasons why. It's just, it's pretty much unnecessary. When it comes to Izuku celebrating, he actually doesn't really care much about it. Then again, Ahsoka did say she had a surprise for him. Yeah, I'm actually pretty much being like, yes, yes, please, please, please. I'm so excited to see what this thing is. As she just tosses him some keys. Uh, what's it going? As yes. She crafted him a hover bike. He's excited to test it out, but then it's like, wait, I don't have my driver's permit or license. Ah. Wait, what's that? <sighs> uh, okay, yeah, apparently you still haven't. Okay, let's explain. What? Yeah. You need certification just to operate a motorized vehicle? Yes. Oh. Huh. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sorry you can't use your gift, Izuku. Uh, that's fine. That's why I decided to enroll you to the driver's test. Wait, what? You're taking the driver's test. Wait, when? Tomorrow. What? Wait, why? How? <laughs> Don't worry. I have my ways. You used to drive my trade, didn't you? Yes, I did. I'm proud of it. So, you want to take it out for a test ride? Ah, yes, but no. I must resist. Why? Come on. It's not going to drive itself. I can't. I must wait. It is the law. L rules. Without them, this world will plunge into anarchy. Well, why not be a little bit rebellious? Inko pretty much like, am I just not here? Excuse me. Uh, that's my son you're talking about. You're trying again to break the law. <laughs> I, I don't like that. So, uh, mm, you're right. Here's a helmet. Uh, that's not what I... Izuku, you're not riding on that thing until you get your license. Okay. Am I understood? Look. <sighs> Okay. Seeing the disappointed look in his eyes, uh, I'm sorry. It's fine. But then, Asoka is like, oh well, I guess I'm just going to drive you myself. What? It's like, of course. I, really? You don't mind? Please. Why would I mind? Good point. 
As yes, you can imagine, Izuku is all hell of excited, and Ego was pretty much like, you are going to be the death of me. And though, yes, Izuku does uh, admire Ahsoka, her being one of the other women in his life that actually are, is nice to him, and yes, she's an older woman, but Izuku, he's uh, starting to pick up on some on a few interests. If anything, the only thing that really upsets him when it comes to that ride is when Ahsoka says, okay, you're going to ride bitch this time. Wait, what? Yeah, since you can't drive, you're going to have to ride bitch. No, no wait, don't, you don't have to say it like that. Wait, where'd you even hear that? Media. Seriously, uh, though, yes, I'm technically, uh, you know, it doesn't mean you gotta say, call her a writing bitch. Hmm. Okay, I guess this will count as shotgun or something. Well, either way, hold on tight and don't let go. It's when you get to the stop sign that so good knows is like. Um, it's the vibration. Right. As soon as they head home, Izuku is apologetic and is like, please don't tell my mom. So, she already knows. Izuku. Wait, you told her? She's like, no. One thing she really wanted to learn is how to read minds. What? I can't believe you got turned on by your teacher. <sighs> Look, I can explain. No, there's no need. I already know. That's fine to have these thoughts. But you're still underage. Okay. You're going to take your time, or at least, uh, I, don't, I don't know, keeping your pants until you become old enough. And that's even if she's interested. Her looking at Ahsoka, Ahsoka blushing, I never considered that. Hey, get those dirty thoughts out of your mind. damn mind. I'm sorry. Yes, Izuku, he's actually counting the days in his mind and calendar till he's finally turned 18. And Ahsoka is pretty much like, oh my god, I spent too much time here. I've already fallen from someone and he's hella young compared to me. Well, then again, he's not that young young, but still. Oh my god, I... The laws, the laws and rules here are so weird. As you can imagine, Izuku is pretty much excited for UA. It's when he sees Bongo sitting down on his desk. <sighs> of course, he made it. It'd be crazy not to let him join UA, despite his tendencies. When it comes to Ida, as you can imagine, yes, she is pretty much being that kind of a guy. Always in someone's personal space, you're scolding them, congratulating them. You can just fill in the dots and you can pretty much say, yeah, that sounds like Ida. But then it's, oh, hey, I remember you. Huh? Oh, uh. Hi, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, Hagakure. Oh, okay. But I have a question. Uh, sure, what is it? How'd you know where I was? Hmm? I mean, 
though, yes, I was wearing something, but how? Oh, well, uh, that's because I can see you. What? Yeah. I mean, you do have messy hair and whatnot, and you seem more or less, uh, yeah. Wait, you, 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 you can see, you, can, you, you know what I look like? Yeah. What do I look like? Her just holding on to Izuku's hand, him being embarrassed, like, wait, what's going on here? Like, please tell me what, what, what I look like, please. Like, uh, well, uh, uh, please? Uh, settle down. Oh, thank you. Uh, no flirting. Wait, that is not what we were doing. Whatever. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Home teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much the correct application test. I expel you if you fall short. Izuku is not worried. In fact, when Bakugo does see how much stronger Izuku's gotten, Bakugo is think, starting to shit bricks. Oh yes, it is very close. Sadly, one Mineta Hagakure, they did not make it. Izuku actually pleading, as I was saying, hey, I can see potential in both of their quirks. Hagakure, even more in love. Mineta, Praising Izuku's name. When it comes to the locker room, it's a Gakure who notices the people. In fact, when Manel uncovers it and she, she sees the boys' locker room, she is already scanning for Izuku. Only thing is, she's wearing a towel and every, the other girls can see, it's like, wait, what are you doing? It's like, huh? It's like, Oh, um, I found this people. Oh, oh, why did you say so before? Jiro doing her reconnaissance and seems that Mineta is trying to, but he's like, please don't do this. You, you, you have no idea what the hell you're going to put yourself through if you do this. It can't be that bad. <sighs> R.I.P. Mineta's eye. But then the other girls notice, like, wait, where's Hagakure? I don't know. Huh. Oh, apparently he's... Wait. Huh. Looks like Midoriya's going into the shower. As they just hear tire screeches. Jiro, what did you just do? Oops. As uh, yes, Hagakuri is trying her best not to draw any attention to herself. As well as sneaking past all the other guys just to get to where Izuku is. Only thing is, Izuku says it's Hagakure. And we were like, hey, I do not appreciate peeping toms. Or, uh, what would be the female equivalent? Tamitha? Tammy? Or... I forgot you could see me. Yes, and... Though... Uh... This is kind of awkward, but please don't do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, I... I, I, I understand. It's... Uh... Uh... Okay, good. You get it then. He said, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no need to be sorry. It's just, you know, we don't know each other. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. As, yeah, she notices Izuku's blushing. Is like, oh my god, that's right. What? Not only did I forget that you could see me. 
I came in here completely naked. Yes, you did. I'm trying to give you your modesty, but I am so sorry. As then you can hear the other girls just walking into the boys' locker room. They're dressed and all, but it still is. Come on, privacy. As they drag Hagakure out of the locker room. Them wondering, like, what just happened? Izuku's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Just walking off like nothing happened. When Inko does ask him how his day was, he does give her enough details to the point where she's like, maybe I don't need to read his mind. But Ahsoka does pick up on a few hints like, okay, he seems like he's hiding something. Her deciding to take a quick peek, but Izuku instantly mental blocks her, getting her even more curious, like, what the hell happened at school. So, yeah, so it's pretty much like, okay, you're going to have to tell me something. Something happened that you don't want us to know about. Again, Izuku has gotten very good at blocking his mind from telepaths like you know who. Only thing is, this just makes them even more suspicious that something did happen. So even if he does say nothing happened, like, then let us read your mind. You had your chance. You had your chance to come clean, but you decided to choose violence. So yes, as you can imagine, Izuku has been training himself to make it so no one can read his mind, no one can Jedi mind trick him, and again, there aren't that many Jedi here, so he's trying his best to make sure that, yeah, mom doesn't try to kill Invisible Girl, or Ahsoka doesn't try to kill Invisible Girl, because as soon as they know... Chances are there's going to be a funeral with a seemingly open, empty casket. Now, here is the heroes versus villains. Izuku is paired up with Oraka. Bago, he is also paired up with Ida. Bago is nowhere near the area, so he is more than willing to hear whatever kind of plan that he can come up with. To the point where he does, like, okay, I don't know the full extent of his abilities, but you rarely see what he could do when it comes to the entrance exam. So, any possible weaknesses, distract him while I try to one shot him. Do you really think that would. Is, well, it may be the, our only option. If he can sense us, then we're fucked, but still. <laughs> so, huh. Okay, so I guess as long as he can't sense our presence, luckily, I don't think he can do that. He's eager to sense our presence and easily <laughs> pins him to the wall. Bogo does get away using explosions, but he uh, does so getting at least one of his legs able to kick through the concrete walls. And, yes, it's pretty much Izuku versus Bakugo and Ida. He tells Orochako to pretty much go get the bomb. While Ida does want to go after her, Bakugo expresses like, I can't beat this guy alone. So they have to double team Izuku. Ida with kicks, Bakugo with explosions. As Izuku notices, wait, something's going on here. Using his slightly enhanced hearing, he hears a lot of swishing. As then, he, as soon as it stops, then he's like, wait a minute. Him turning his head and seeing Kotsky pull a pin to one of his gauntlets. The explosion. Is just as you would expect it to be. Only thing is, it's more concentrated and more powerful, therefore, a lot more destructive. And Izuku 
It took everything he had to hold it back, as well as keep the building still intact. In which, he falls unconscious, but by the time they're about to put the, you know, counter tape on him, Oraka grabs the bomb, and the hero team wins. All Might scolds the hell out of Bakugo for doing something so reckless, in which he's, I had no other choice, I really wanted to win, but endangering your classmates is not the way. Yeah, I said it. Fine. Doesn't matter. I lost anyway. Bago leaves and Izuku wakes up in the infirmary. 